Listen, I've always said that kids get so creative when it comes to finding ways to cheat on a test and get away with it. But these people? Oh my gosh. These are some of the most creative and ridiculous ways I've seen Karen's try to get a free service. Hi my lovelies, Andrew Rebecca Rogers, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. And it's time for a hairstylist to tell us we just can't make this stuff up. I asked the hairstylist in my Instagram and Facebook following, hey, what are some situations you guys have experienced at work that just makes you think, oh my gosh, we don't get paid enough. Side note, I've been agonizing because I don't really know what to call these people. Are they salon workers or hairstylists or hairdressers or I don't, I don't know. They just want to be respectful. And here are 15 of their answers. On Christmas Eve, I decided I would give my last client of the night a free haircut for the holidays. I finished his hair and told him, hey, don't worry about it. It's on the house. Merry Christmas. He got visibly upset at me. Do I look like I can't afford a haircut or something to you? No, I was just trying to do something nice for the holidays. I don't need your pity party handouts, okay? I'm a man. I'm more than capable of paying for my own haircut. So don't just stand there, ring me up. I will be paying. Okay, okay, I'm, I'm sorry. How dare you? Okay, Ebenezer Scrooge. How insecure do you have to be? Just take the nice thing. Just take the nice gesture. This is why we can't have nice things. Can you just imagine someone genuinely trying to do something sweet for another person and it just... <sighs> I'm trying to justify in my head what could be going on where this guy would get that upset and I just can't come up with anything to justify it. A customer made a point to tell me she wasn't gonna tip me, not because she didn't like her hair, but because I was in the bathroom when she arrived and I wasn't immediately ready to take her back as soon as she walked in the door. She was literally 15 minutes late, but it's my fault I went to the bathroom when she didn't show up on time. We waited all morning for you. This lady literally waited 10 minutes for you not to show up. Finally convinced herself it was safe to go to the bathroom. And then you throw a temper tantrum because she took the two minutes to herself. There are so many occupations that just, they genuinely don't have a couple minutes to go pee, whether it be nurses or teachers or hairstylists. You're okay that someone takes the two minutes to go to the bathroom. You're fine. Things happen and people run late and that's normal. It's not everybody yet. But when you make it everybody else's problem. Mm. This one lady was convinced that I was gonna let her hair fry off. Um, excuse me, you just, you just left me here. My hair is melting. Your hair is not melting, you're completely fine. I've never had to sit here for this long before. That's just because you've never gone this blonde before. No, no, you're just being lazy and careless with my hair. I want you to rinse me now. If I rinse you now, your hair's not gonna be the color that you want. I'm not letting you fry my hair. Rinse me now. Okay. What the heck? My hair is so dark. What is this? This isn't what I paid for. We agreed that I was gonna go blonder. I'm not paying for this. Let me speak to your manager. No, oh, that made my head hurt. It genuinely is exhausting. All of the people who think they know everybody else's job than those that are actually trained at that job. Make it make sense. I once saw a grown woman try to tell another grown woman how she could and couldn't get her hair cut all because she was gonna be her mother-in-law and she knew what was best for the family. Immediately no. Why is the fiance not backing up his bride? Why is this even a thing? It's bothering me that this behavior has clearly been entertained long enough for this incident to even transpire in the first place. Listen, all I'm saying is I'm a firm believer in the idea of putting your foot down early and standing up for yourself before it becomes a pattern that you're just miserable. And before the Gertrudes come for me in the comments, there's a difference between making compromises for the family that benefit everyone and allowing not just a family member, your husband's family member to control your appearance like that. That's not normal. A guy came in to get his hair cut and brought his girlfriend with him. I didn't think anything of it until she started complaining about 
how close I was standing to her boyfriend. But there's like such a thing as personal space. Man, I have to cut his hair. Like, why are you getting so close to him? Do you like him or something? I mean, he's not single. I'm his girlfriend. I literally have scissors close to his face and ears, and I'm standing at a normal distance to ensure his safety. Well, I know how you hairstylists are. Okay, so just don't try to pull anything, because he's not single. Okay. You get a red flag, and you get a red flag. Everybody gets red flags! That feels like a deeper issue that I really hope this girl can work through. And you know what? If it's an issue between the couple and he's untrustworthy, I hope that girl stands up for herself and finds her a man she can trust to go get a haircut. Without more information, I just, I don't know which one of them is at fault for that, whether he's done something to be labeled as untrustworthy or if she just has insecurities naturally. Whichever one it is, I hope they get the help they need and that they can either move forward together in a healthier relationship or move on into a healthier relationship. But if you're watching this and that feels normal or rings a bell, get some help. I had an older woman come in for a cut in color and as soon as she sat down, she pulled out her phone and started watching videos. I didn't realize what the videos were at first, but then I started hearing sounds. She was watching adult videos just casually on her phone while I was doing her hair. The entire salon could hear what she was watching too. Shut it down! I feel like there's gotta be rules about that kind of stuff, right? Like if the hotel in an earlier episode could tell the girl, hey, this is privately owned and we can't have explicit music playing in the lobby, I feel like the salon could ask this woman to not play that for everybody to hear. I probably would have. But what if someone's bringing their kid to get a haircut or something like that? No. This one girl who came in, oh, she was the worst. She wanted to change her hair color, a pretty drastic change from her natural color, and I said, sure, no problem. I showed her swatches and told her which shade I thought would look best with her complexion. But she wasn't interested in my suggestions. She wanted to go a completely different route. So I did what she asked for, it's her hair, she can get whatever she wants. Ta-da, and what do you think? What did you do to my hair? Oh, you don't like it? Like it, I look terrible. My brother's wedding is supposed to be next weekend and I look like a joke. You need to fix it right now. Fix it for free. Don't panic, don't panic. Okay, we can definitely do a color correction, but I, I don't think I'm gonna be able to do that for free. But you let me make this drastic change right before a really important event. I had no way to know you had an important event going on. You came here to color your hair before this event. You chose a color against my advice. I showed you swatches, I gave you opinions on shades and colors, and you wanted to go a different direction, which is totally fine. You can do whatever you want to your hair. These are all decisions that you made, but I can't fix choices you made for free. Color corrections are very expensive, and that's just not something that I can afford to do for every client. And I can definitely help you fix them, I just can't do it for free. You are the worst hairstylist I've ever seen. I'm, the fact that you let this happen is so despicable. I'm gonna have your job for this. <laughs> What's wrong with you? I don't even know how to respond. How do you not see that's your fault? You went to get your hair colored knowing you had an event going on. You wanted to do something drastic. You went against the suggestions from the hairstylist. You, you made all of the decisions. It's not her job to stop you from making decisions. It's her job to do what you want. That's what you're paying her for. You would have an even bigger fit if you went to this hairstylist and was like, this is what I want, and she told you no. I already know what you would say. Excuse me, I pay your salary. I'm always right. The customer is always right. And then the same thing would happen. You would make her do it, and you would still hate it and blame it on her. Oh my gosh. These stories are really making me appreciate my hairstylist. I already appreciate her, I love her. Fun fact about me, I have had the same lady do my hair since I was five, maybe? That's what we call loyalty. Some creep wouldn't stop talking about how pretty he thought I was while I was cutting his hair and then started feeling himself under the cape. I don't know if he 
thought I couldn't see or if he thought I wouldn't care, but I kicked him out immediately. He was actually shocked and told me that I should just take the compliment. Oh, you nasty. I hate that. I cannot stand when men say uncomfortable or creepy things and they're so offended that you don't take their comments as compliments. Kevin, no one asked for your input. You can be nice without being a creep, okay? The problem isn't people don't want you to be nice. The problem is you're being creepy. You're not being nice, you're being creepy. What's the opposite of a Gertrude, a Gerard? Before all the Gerards come for me in the comments, if you feel attacked by me saying that, then yes, I am talking to you. It's the men who don't feel attacked because they're self-aware enough to understand not to be creepy and how not to be creepy that those men I'm not talking to because they are just being nice. If you feel attacked, I'm probably talking to you. That's usually a pretty good life lesson. If you hear a story or whatever about someone being weird or creepy or uncomfortable or entitled and you feel personally attacked. If the boot fits. They're probably talking about you. If you don't feel attacked, they're not talking about you most likely. It's always felt like a good gauge. One lady thought she was so slick. I was in beauty school and she came to get her hair washed and styled and accused me of hurting her. I was straightening her hair when I literally put my straight iron down to grab something and the lady all of a sudden jerked forward and started howling. Oh, you burned me, you stupid girl. You can't even hold a flat iron right. Oh my gosh. This service better be for free since you literally burned me. She turned to look at me and I looked at her and then at my straightener sitting on the cart and back at her. She noticed too that I wasn't even holding my straightener when she freaked out and got super embarrassed. My classmates say she does this often, comes and accuses students of messing up just so that she can get free services. If you were to open up a dictionary and, and look up the name Karen, I feel like her picture would be there because that is just such a great example. There was a client who just had a very busy career and would usually just shower and immediately put her hair into a bun or ponytail because her hair was always up she never worried about getting it cut. This went on for about a year or so until she finally came in to get a haircut. When I ran my fingers through her hair, there was fungus and mold substance growing on her scalp. Needless to say, she ended up getting a pixie cut that day. I feel nauseous. How do you go to sleep at night? Not feeling, ugh. I just don't understand how that happens. Do you not wash your hair for a year? Do you not touch your hair for a year? Does anyone have any ideas of how that happens? I can't imagine just not ever touching my hair. And if you touch your hair, you've gotta feel that, right? I'm not crazy. Am I crazy? Can someone tell me? I just, I don't, I don't understand how that happens. We once had a kid come in with lice, so we had to refuse services. His mom was not understanding. What do you mean you can't cut my kid's hair? Ma'am, your child has lice. It's a health hazard. Okay, so treat it. Oh, I legally cannot touch your child's hair while he has lice. I could lose my license, but I can definitely point you in the directions of products that'll help you treat it at home. How do I know that he just didn't get it from here, right? Like, this is a hair place and probably not a very clean one. He could have gotten it from here. That's not how lice works. Just walking into our store would not give him lice. You're a hairstylist. I mean, you didn't go to college. It's not like you actually know how lice works. We asked her to leave immediately and told her, She's not welcome back. As you should. That reminds me of the cab driver that had just the mom and the little girl with lice just hop in, no protective coverings or whatever, just let in that spread. There are rules in place for a reason, okay? You don't get to break every rule just because you have a child. And not only that you have a child that you don't want to care for that child. If these professionals are telling you, I cannot help you, I could lose my job for breaking that rule, that doesn't mean get mad and threaten them. That's not gonna help you. That's just gonna make you look like a jerk. No one in any profession is gonna risk their job just cause you yell at them and ask them to. In the nicest way possible, you're not that special. 
I was working on one of my regulars hair when I went to go grab her color and came back to her looking incredibly uncomfortable. I asked her what was wrong. She whispered to me that the lady next to her was doing weird stuff. Every time her stylist would walk away for whatever reason, she would take something off the counter and shove it up her dress. I was stunned. I didn't know what to do or say. While my client was processing, I pulled aside the stylist and the owner and had them watch the cameras. They proceeded to kick the lady out. I'm still grossed out to this day. No, God, please, no. I have so many questions that I don't know if I want the answer to. Was this a stealing plan kind of thing? Like, was that the goal? As Weird as that's gonna sound, I hope so. You know what, I don't know if I wanna know. We're just gonna move on. This lady just doesn't understand how this works. Okay, so I wanna be like blonde blonde, like platinum blonde, okay? But my budget is 150, I cannot go over 150. Oh, I'm sorry, if you wanna go platinum platinum, we're gonna be looking more at the two to 300 range. I'm, there's just no way I'm gonna be able to get you there for 150, but I want platinum hair. I understand, but the materials needed to get you platinum hair are more expensive than what you're able to spend right now. And I can get you as close as possible under your budget, but you will not have platinum hair today. Whatever. Okay, we're done. What do you think? What the heck? This isn't what I asked for. I told you that I wanted to go platinum blonde. We had a whole conversation about why that wasn't gonna be possible. No, this is not what I wanted, okay? This service better be free, because this is not what I asked for. Is this a trick? I can't tell if it's on purpose or not. I mean, it was explained to her. She's a grown woman. If she heard what was being said to her, she would get it. So was she not listening? Or does she think that she just deserves the extra stuff without having to pay for it? Or was this a plan to make sure she didn't have to pay for it? I don't know. I can't tell. What do you guys think? I had a client who was a nightmare. Well, the client was actually a very sweet little girl. Her mom was a nightmare. Her mom refused to brush her hair at home and she said it was my job to take care of hair maintenance, not hers. This little girl would come in every month with giant rat's nests of unwashed, nasty, knotted hair that would take me over an hour to brush out every time. I never fired the client because I just felt so bad for the kid. I was literally the only one who ever washed or brushed her hair. I just wanted to make sure someone was doing it, at least until she was old enough to take care of it herself. You're doing the Lord's work. That's neglect though, right? Am I imagining things? I feel like I saw this online, but I feel like it was discussed that in a similar situation, that would be classified as child neglect. Uncle Vore in a phone call. Again, I can't tell if I'm imagining that or not. That poor baby girl. One time, this lady genuinely couldn't understand that just because other people at the salon get certain services, doesn't mean that she had to. Hey, Miss Jones, feel free to come on back. Okay, um, why does that lady over there have blue hair? Oh, Jessica? Oh, she gets the prettiest colors. I guess this month is blue. But I, I don't want that. And that lady over there, like, her hair is a reddish purple. I mean, these are not natural colors. Right, I just have you done for a trim. We're not coloring your hair today. I don't want you doing that to my hair. And that's fine. Again, we're not coloring your hair at all. How can I trust you when I can see you put funky colors on your clients with my own eyes? Does it, does it like amuse you or something to see your clients just walk out of here looking like clowns? Yes, ma'am. That's, again, just what she asked for. I just, I... I don't know if I can trust you to do my hair, seeing what you do to your other clients. You know what? Maybe you're right. Maybe this just is not the salon for you. <sighs> I'm busy, you're weird, goodbye. Yes, handled that perfectly. Love that, love that response. But what is the disconnect? I really don't understand. That's making me anxious, I need a tea break. That was 15 examples from hairstylists letting us know they really don't get paid enough. Now that my bad 
Apple subreddit is a little bit more situated. I really want to focus on building up the community for we can't make this stuff up. Whether you want to share your one-off story about your job or I'm looking for stories for the next occupation, I really just want to make a space where we all feel comfortable and supportive of each other and can really listen to each other's crazy days. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope tomorrow you guys have the best hair day ever. And I hope to see you guys next week. Bye, my lovelies. Mwah.